we are now at the stage where we, we're going to move towards a full um, and complete financial analysis. So in this third financial analysis lesson, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do we're going to look at financial statement analysis because now that we've had this lesson six and we've expanded the ledger and we have revenue accounts and expense accounts, those income statement accounts, we can do a f and in other words, we have the income statement. We can do a more complete analysis and we can also start to talk about something important, which is how much is a business worth how much is a company worth because it's not what it's not the equity on the balance sheet because remember that's calculated using old historical cost values for assets and it's a, it can be a very complicated process and that's and it's and that's in addition to how well the company's doing with your financial analysis so um before we move on, let's quickly remind you that up here you've got all of your financial ratios, but we don't know them all yet. Remember, when you open that, you've got all the ratios listed, and down this column you've got uh, how to interpret them and in explanation and then target values here. Um, but something I haven't drawn your attention to yet is this financial analysis learning sequence. And really that's something to help you sort of organize your notes, your thinking, and prepare for a big assignment in financial analysis or prepare for the exam, that kind of thing. And it looks like this, where we have all of the ratios and analysis techniques here down the column, and they're even sort of categorized. Um, remember, there are some that are in grade 12 that you're not responsible for. Um, but here's our liquidity and our sort of financial position, our risk of solvency ratios, and they're sort of organized by type. And these are the lessons. We're on this video is is analysis lesson three, and we're gonna look at or sort of prep you for K6. And these check marks are all the things you have to do in the case, all the analysis techniques you've got to use. And the red ones tell you which ones you've learned for the first time in that activity or in that lesson. So this time, in this video right now, we're going to learn about the accounts receivable turnover. And we're going to learn about the return on equity and return on sales. And of course, you're going to do the ones you already know because you don't you don't do an incomplete analysis whenever you do analysis. You have to do everything. So without further ado, here's the case. I mean, you can read it for yourself, um, but use this template. I got one already prepped for you. And if you forget from this video, it's explained down here. But pro forma means an estimated projection for the income statement. So you got to look at this information and and sort of come up with what would be a good estimate for a year's worth of performance. So the income and the expenses and then profit or loss, right? The only real information they give you is sort of how many customers they have and the average they charge them. And the rest you kind of got to figure out based on what assets they have and what they do to earn their income. And then right at the end, a friend is offering 20,000 or someone's offering 20 grand for this business. Uh, is it worth that? Should you sell it? Uh, which means you have to kind of figure out what a value would be. And I'll tell you right now, it's going to be more than just what the equity is in the business right now. Um, so let's take a look at those ratios. And, and remember, you, if you want, you, you can look at the formulas here, but I'm going to tell you as I do them. So the first one, accounts receivable turnover, is a really important one for businesses that sell stuff on credit. And what it actually means is it's telling you how long it takes you to sell something on credit. In other words, now you've got accounts receivable and then collect all of it. How long does that cycle take? Right. And since accounts receivable, accounts receivables are due every 30 days, you would hope that your accounts receivable turnover in days would be 30. Because if it's more than 30, um, you're not collecting your money fast enough. And there's two ways. There's accounts receivable turnover in terms of the number of times you turn it over in a year. So it should be 12, right, every month. Or accounts receivable turnover measured in days. And I'll show you both. So what you need to understand is that, think of a toy business. So at the end of December, they would have had a huge amount of sales of toys, right, because of the holiday season. And they probably have a lot of accounts receivable. But at, say, the end of, I don't know, July, they wouldn't have that many. right? And they may not have that many at the end of January either. So to smooth out the value of accounts receivable, you actually, in this formula, use average accounts receivable. So what you need is sales, but only the sales on credit. And here's why. And yes, you do have to remember this kind of stuff for the exam. And this is, it's also here, if you look. 
it's explained kind of why you need it. So think about this. Why does, why are you, here's the formula. You take net sales on credit and you divide it by average accounts receivable. So here, let's just assume all of these are on credit. And the reason it's not total revenue, it's total revenue, so it's net revenue on credit, is because only credit sales create accounts receivable, right? So if you didn't collect, if you didn't sell anything on account, didn't sell anything on credit, you would have no accounts receivable. So to figure out how long it takes you on average to collect accounts receivable, well, you can only use the sales that would generate in the first place. So if you take net sales on credit, and you divide it by the average accounts receivable that you had on hand, which would be the average of these two, which would be about 37,000 and a half, right? But that would tell you how many times you sell through your inventory on account and then collect it in a year. That makes sense? So based on $300,000 of credit sales, and I'm just assuming they're all credit sales, and an average outstanding inventory of right in between those two, so 37,500. I turn over my accounts receivable approximately eight times a year. So to find out how many days it is, because some people understand it better when it's in days, we're gonna take 365 days, and remember bed mass here, and we're gonna divide it by the eight, the answer. And we're gonna get about 46 and 45 and a half days. And remember accounts receivable, or it's supposed to be paid in 30. So this company, is slow on collecting its accounts receivable. So this is another method. Remember, if you look at your learning sequence and what it measures, it's in this liquidity zone, right? So you have your current ratio, your quick ratio that are meant to measure sort of financial position, risk from insolvency. You now have this one. It incorporates the performance measures from the income statement in terms of how much money you're making and how much profit, but it's related to position. It's related to risk from insolvency because obviously you can't spend accounts receivable. You can't spend your money in the hands of someone else. So the faster you can get your hands on your receivables, the less risk you have of insolvency. So the, the next two are measures of profitability. So they tell you how basically, so let's, let's start with uh, return on sales. Return on sales tells you how effective you are at managing costs, of controlling costs and making as much profit as possible. And it measures profit compared to all the money that you took in and kept. So if somebody has a sale return, you don't count that, but the, your net sales that you keep, how much of those were you able to turn into profit? In other, in other words, how many cents of every dollar you generate in revenue became profit? And that's an easy one to calculate. You just take your net income or net loss and you divide it by gross sales or revenue, right? And it's a percent. You can leave it like this or you can make it a percent. So in this case, it's 16.67 or so, 16.7%. Simple enough, right? And the last one, the last one is another measure of efficiency, which you can use. This is the only hint I'll get because again, I'm not going to give away the case in the lesson for those that want to try it and then do the take up after. So uh, I will tell you that both of these, but especially this one, is a way that you can use to value um, how much a business is worth. Because if you think about it, if you take, I don't know, whatever, you take $100,000 and you put it in an investment and you earn some interest, say 5%. Well, if you put money into a business, in other words, you buy it, what return are you making on the equity you as the owner have in that business? How is the business performing? And again, this one is divided by average equity because again, the, you're trying to figure out, sort of smooth out the equity balance during the year because it's not constant. You can't just use the balance sheet value because that's what they had December 31st. So you have to come up with average equity. So this would be again, net income divided by the average equity during the year. And this is still just an estimate. You just take last year's ending because that's this year's beginning right and you take this year's ending and you average the two to get your denominator right it's right here return on equity is net income divided by average equity and that works out to be 0.26 so again a percent 26 percent so last i checked interest rates were at a, at a really good savings account might be two percent so the return on equity in this business is 26 so think about that when it comes to valuation. And that's essentially it. Again, this is measuring 
sort of return on your on your capital, your equity, your investment. And this one in particular is measuring your effectiveness at controlling costs and being able to generate profit from your sales. So give the case a shot and uh, we'll see how you do.